Just thought I'd chance it, get some fresh air, have a look for some mushrooms. I think I think we could be in for a nice shot today. So that's the first shot done. Mushrooms sitting on a, a tree stump. Looks pretty nice in the frame. I'll put that up now. And I've just been doing a bit of hunting around and there's some other mushrooms just by the area I'm in. So I want to try and shoot that. There's a, there's a couple of, sort of smallish gray mushrooms which uh, are in a pair, which look quite nice. So I'm gonna shoot that and crack on because the light isn't gonna hang around for me. Um, so let's see how we get on with that one. So I hope you like that combination of the, the single mushroom and then the, the sort of tall and small mushrooms. I don't know, there's something about them that makes them look like a little family and I really like that. So always look out for that if you're uh, spotting mushrooms. Try and get one single and then try and look for doubles or triples because they always like, you know, seem a bit more pleasing to the eye, I guess. One thing definitely to mention is today I have with me my trusty pair of gardening gloves. That is so that I can get in and just pick little things out. I definitely recommend you wear gloves anyway because anything to do with mushrooms, obviously anywhere near mushrooms, their spores are going to be on the, on the ground and stuff around it. So you, you never know what you're touching really. So I always try and, and use a pair of gardening gloves. Got to remember most of these mushrooms that are wild are really, really poisonous. So, you know, I'm doing my best to not touch anything to do with the mushroom, just maybe little twigs around the side of it, but that's about as much as I want to do. And we've also got a face mask here as well. Obviously we're all carrying those these days anyway, but if you come across any of those bigger mushrooms, you may have like uh, airborne spores, which is pretty disgusting, I know. But if you come across anything like that, always whack a face mask on as well, because you don't want to be breathing any of that stuff in. And then finally, my third little tip is to bring a little flashlight with you. That's been absolutely invaluable, to be honest. A tenner on, on Amazon or something. But honestly, you just, you just sort of hold the light um, and then you just take multiple frames and you can light the whole scene. And especially with the green foliage, that just lights it all up and gives it a bit, a bit of punch that's, that's needed, especially when it's dull like this. So anyway, happy with that location and on to the next. So I've just stumbled across a section of wood that is broken up by this huge pile, I guess you'd call it, of, of dead trees. In fact, there's other trees growing out of this, this pile. So I've come across like at least two really cool little uh, clusters of mushrooms. I'm looking at the screen at the back of the camera and if I see any distractions, I'm just gonna use my gloves, pick very carefully little twigs and things to clear it up. And then also I'm moving around as well. So I'm using the tripod and, I, and I'm just moving around very slightly to see what angles you can get. Cause you can get nice straight on angles. You can get kind of side on and, and other angles like that. So it's definitely worth like using using a bit of movement with your feet just to, to carry the tripod around, just, just see what, what you can get really. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Again, I always say it, but I'm, I'm actually quite happy with these two. You know, again, nice little clusters of mushrooms. When you're out mushroom hunting and you've taken a few shots uh, you're always looking for the next the next mushroom to sort of take because you've got a few in the bag and you think oh what else what else is out there kind of thing and since i started there is one mushroom that's kind of remained very elusive and it's the classic fairy toadstool mushroom you know the fly agaric i've put in a few hours of doing these mushroom videos and i have not come across a single one yet it's so far remained elusive which is really annoying until today and until just now because i was stumbling through the woods i was thinking oh there's not much here and then boom two fly agarics one has been slightly nibbled the other is on its way from looking the best but i'm going to capture a few shots now because that's a huge tick in my book that's the one i've been after for a few weeks now and i just want to make sure that i capture it well 
Um, I'm going to take two shots. Um, one is with mid zoom or the kit lens on the Fuji. That's the 18 to 55 mil. So that'll give us a nice sort of uh, wide angle. It'll put the mushroom in context of where it is, which is obviously in a wood. And then the other the other shot I'm going to go for is a is a macro shot, and I'll just play around with the compositions once I've got that on the on the camera. One last shot before I move on to my next location. Noticed it out of the corner of my eye really as like odd sort of orange colour grown up and it looks like some sort of coral uh, fungus that's grown up. Yeah, really happy with that and hopefully this uh, this coral or um, antler fungus will come out um, as well. So we'll see how that goes. What I've got in front of me here just caught my eye as I was walking along. A sort of an area of bracken that is in amongst some pine trees. In the middle, you've got a couple of bracken, obviously, just sticking out of the top. So I literally had a double take when I was walking past. So I've just set up my shot now. I'll just turn the camera around and I'll show you my settings. On the Fuji X-T2, um, I don't know if you can see this, I've got my macro lens, which is a uh, Samyang 100mm macro lens. I'm using it here as a bit of a telephoto lens, just to pick out a detail, um, pick out the fern detail, which is really showing up nicely on the back of the screen. At the moment I'm on f4, but I'm just switching between f4, f5.6, f8, kind of in those, in those regions. Just taking a few shots different with different apertures. Uh, I'm trying to keep my shutter speed locked at 125th of a second and my ISO is just down at 200. I'm picking my times when I take the shot. As soon as the cloud breaks, it, it's lighting up the fern, bringing through a lot more uh, saturated yellow and golden tones with a bit of green in the foreground. So that, that's again quite a nice balance of colour. What I'm just doing is positioning the fern so you know, there's not a, a strong vertical coming out. So within the last five minutes as I've been waiting here, the conditions have changed a bit. It's gotten very gloomy all of a sudden. So I think that that kind of low backlight has gone now. So things have changed again, as you can see. Uh, I had to break out the rain jacket there because the heavens opened a bit. I, I spotted a break in the cloud after that rain shower and I'm just literally just waiting here. Quickly set up pretty much in the same spot and we'll see what we get now. The sun will have a clearer path through the, through the trees here. You can see the sun creeping through here and what I want it to do is backlight this little piece of fern here. Looks really nice on the back of the camera. Two second timer. Beautiful. I'm just gonna wait here in case it gets a little bit better, but this is when it gets good. I think you have to stick around and have uh, have a bit of patience, tried to capture a bit of a vision there.
as always, thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.